Thank you. Well, I want to welcome everybody uh, this morning so, for this exciting and historic event where we get to uh, make the announcement that uh, we've eradicated uh, pink bollworm in the cotton industry. And so, <laughs> but for that official announcement, I would like to introduce uh, Secretary Purdue. Secretary Purdue's uh, roots and uh, association with American agriculture goes clear back to being born on a farm in Bonaire, Georgia. And so ever since that time, uh, growing up on the farm, being uh, part of the production agriculture chain to his association with being part of agribusiness, and then as governor, uh, overseeing a uh, agriculture department and the parts that of the agriculture industry uh, that he worked with as governor were all parts of his growth now to leading agriculture in our nation. When Secretary Purdue came to the Department of Agriculture, he made it known to all of us that he wanted the USDA to be the most efficient, effective, and customer-oriented department in all of federal government. And I think over the last uh, uh, few months, uh, he has made great strides in making a difference in how uh, USDA relates, how we as undersecretaries look for ways to address uh, the problems and concerns that face our different agricultural interest group that come to USDA. Um, we're, uh, uh, know that he also is very interested in being a strong advocate for agriculture internationally. And this announcement also has uh, implications to uh, providing greater access and more ease of access to foreign markets for the cotton industry all around the world. So with that, I would like to uh, ask Secretary Purdue to come to the stage and uh, make our fine declaration here this morning. Thank you, Greg. Thank you very much. Good, good morning, everyone. I have to admit, you guys look pretty good, having been on the 100-year battle for the bollworm. So, uh, and, and a lot of excitement out here this morning. I didn't expect this many people and this much excitement for the wait for the pink bollworm. So, uh, we're happy to have you here. And uh, obviously, it is a historic announcement. Uh, uh, maybe not a hundred years. It looks like some of you may have joined later on, but uh, uh, you know this has been a battle, and to celebrate something like this, uh, with the rest of the world may seem insignificant. But for you folks in the cotton industry, you know how important it is, and you know what the damage and the millions of dollars that it's cost in the past. So this is a significant announcement because cotton is significant in the world trade. You know that. Uh, our U.S. production uh, accounts for about 30% of global trade in raw cotton, $27 billion in products and services, hundreds of thousands of jobs from the, the field to the processing to the logistics and uh, mills and others. And uh, so that enemy, the pink bollworm, was an enemy to our economy as it was an enemy to agriculture. So we know that it began south of the border in uh, Mexico in 1911, soon showed up on uh, our shores in southwest uh, U.S. in Texas in 1917, and was a prolific spreader after that. So there were several efforts to eradicate uh, this pest uh, with limited success, and uh, frankly, farmers were spending, even at that time, uh, 40 to $100 an acre to control the damage of the pink bollworm uh, in this efforts. But in 1955, APHIS, our Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, established a domestic quarantine program for infested states. In 2000, APHIS, along with the industry and state partners, launched a program to eradicate the pink bollworm from the U.S. and northern Mexico. And it took a multiple of strategies, of which we're all proud genetically. It took uh, transgenic BT cotton. It took extensive surveys and traps and understanding where this pest was. It took pheromone applications. And it took a, a, another biological uh, tool, sterile moss released in order to uh, do that. 
you probably need to know, and you do know, many of you who grow cotton, that growers paid for assessments to, uh, uh, to propagate this battle. In fact, California cotton producers paid for the facility where the sterile moss were incubated and grown in order to be released, and that's owned by the California Department of Food and Agriculture. APHIS itself contributed 20 to 30 percent of the overall eradication program and include uh, massive hatching and rearing of these moths and the release of the sterilized moth as maintaining and enforcing the quarantine activities uh, so that the pink bollworm did not spread any further. So the good news is that demonstrates the effectiveness and the success when we work in partnership, one with the other. Our federal, our state partners, our industry partners, our growers, working together demonstrates the value of partnership and investment and putting our research and close to and applicable to the farmers that we serve. So it is indeed a great victory and I'm happy to be part of it. And so uh, after five years and surveys, we found that all areas of commercial cotton production in the United States are free of the pink bollworm. So while our undersecretary uh, has already made the announcement, preempted my announcement. <laughs> I just want to show, I want to make it official with this proclamation, and we're going to sign that I, Sonny Purdue, Secretary of Agriculture, do hereby proclaim that the pink bollworm is officially eradicated from cotton producers' areas in the continental United States and all remaining restrictions on the movement of cotton. Hallelujah. So. We, uh, we actually have rules in the book, in the big thick book, that we're going to tear out and throw away, and I kind of love this part of my job, so I'm throwing away the rules. <laughs> Thank you all. God bless you. May you rest in peace. That was pretty exciting. <laughs> So uh, now I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Gary Adams uh, to come to the podium today. Uh, Gary has uh, been uh, a great partner uh, with uh, me in helping me understand and uh, working with my staff to understand, a Midwestern boy to understand issues like uh, the cotton industry. He's also served as the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Cotton Council since February of 2015. and. Um, uh, just a great partner with APHIS in leading the way to help us uh, in implement programs to address pests and disease, as well as working with AMS, my other agency within MRP, to be able to do things to grade and market cotton as well. So with that, I would like to uh, invite Gary to uh, come to the podium. Well, thank you very much for that introduction, and uh, it is a pleasure uh, for the National Cotton Council to be here to participate in this USDA declaration that the pink bollworm, which has been an invasive and destructive pest of cotton production in the western United States, has been eradicated from the continental cotton production areas. This historic achievement would not have been possible without years of research by university and USDA ARS scientists that identified weaknesses in the biology of the pink bollworm. This led to the formation of a partnership with federal and state agencies, together with the efforts of cotton producers who bore the major cost burden in pursuit of pink bollworm eradication. Uh, you all know this has not been an easy task nor a fast process. Uh, Secretary Purdue mentioned earlier, it was first reported by, uh, the first report of a pink bollworm in the United States was in 1917 in Hearn, Texas and it's believed that it did come in from Mexico. The destruction of cotton by this pest and its spread to other cotton producing states devastated many communities whose economies relied on cotton. Producers had to adjust in the, in the wake of the pink bollworm by planting cotton varieties with short season maturities uh, or, and to include other production practices such as early stalk destruction to minimize the number of pink bollworm moths surviving over the winter. The producers have been forced to use multiple and costly insecticide applications to minimize damage uh, to their crop. And still, the pink bollworm is estimated to have cost $32 million annually 
to producers in the West in terms of yield losses and incre increased control costs. The magnitude of the pink bollworm losses united producers, scientists, and government officials to work together to eliminate this pest. And due to the efforts of research scientists and, and some of those who are with us today, pink bollworm moths could be raised and released as sterile adults. This effort, which was originally intended as a suppression program, later proved to be one of the most significant and forward-thinking concepts and actions to actually facilitate an eradication effort. The National Cotton Council appreciates the effort of our producer members, uh, the dedication and coordination of APHA staff, and the collective contribution of many scientists that have worked on this, and the federal funding support from Congress that enabled USDA APHIS to complete this monumental task. Uh, the pink bollworm, as mentioned earlier, is, is no longer present in U.S. cotton production. We are also encouraged by actions underway in Mexico that continue the eradication efforts so that we can continue to push the pink bollworm further away from the U.S. border. These types of continuing efforts will enhance the long-term success of the U.S. eradication program. Uh, in recognition of the contribution of cotton producer leadership, I'd like to thank Clyde Sharp of Arizona and Ted Sheely of California, who currently serve as co-chairman of the National Cotton Council's Pink Bollworm Action Committee. Their leadership on this action committee uh, ensured the stability of producer support for the operation of this program with producer cooperation. And in closing, Mr. Secretary, I would like to thank you and the entire USDA team for your partnership in the Pink Bollworm Eradication Program and for inviting us to share in this historic declaration. Thank you again. Thank you. Based upon the information provided and authorized by the cotton coroner under Secretary Greg Ibar, <laughs> I hereby am signing the death certificate of the pink bollworm by this act. Rest in peace. Yes. Nice pen and the memory for you there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank, 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 you. thank you, sir. Thank all of you for coming. Thank you. The Secretary has a busy morning, and so we really appreciate that he was able to take some time to uh, uh, sign the proclamation and make comments and uh, be part of the, this important and um, mem memorable ceremony. So we're going to go ahead with uh, some more recognitions and some more uh, comments that we'd like to uh, have uh, this morning. And with that, I'd like to have uh, Mr. Clyde Sharp, one of the uh, co-chairs of the Cotton uh, Council's uh, committee to uh, uh, work on the bollworm action, actually the pink bollworm action committee. Clyde's been very active leader in the U.S. cotton industry for many years and has served in multiple leadership roles for Cotton Incorporated, the Arizona Cotton Growers Association, and the National Cotton Council. And so with that, I would like to ask um, Clyde to come up and uh, make a few comments in celebration today. Oh, thank you, Undersecretary, I appreciate this. Uh, prior to 19 years ago, I was a producer on the outside looking in, and I said to myself, you know, we should be able to get rid of this pest. So I became extremely active in the eradication of the pink bollworm. I've done such a good job and made it so much more profitable for growers to be growing cotton that I haven't grown cotton in five years. <laughs> also, uh, in Arizona, prior to the eradication, uh, back in the late 1900s, early 2000s, it was nothing for a cotton farmer to spray anywhere from 8 to 12 times in the course of a crop to get rid of their pest. Today, we are under two times per acre per crop. That's a tremendous savings to the economy, to the atmosphere, and to the grower to be able to 
have the pest eradicated to make it a lot more profitable to be able to grow cotton. Today marks an incredible victory that represents a great example of how private public partnerships can work through united cooperation between federal, state, and private partners. I must admit that's not just entirely true. We also had a tremendous amount of help with people in Mexico in being able to not only eradicate it in the U.S., but also eradicate it in northern Mexico to be able to push the insect farther south so that we can sit here today and declare that we are free of pink bollworm. On behalf of the cotton producers who have battled the pink bollworm most of their career, and those that battled the pink bollworm before us, we thank everyone that has made this day possible. Cotton producers have fought the pink bollworm on individual farms for more than 80 years. Prior to this launch of the federal pink bollworm eradication in 2001, once the pink bollworm eradication program was launched, the producers were astonished at the impact of the area-wide program. Amazingly, the pink bollworm eradication program relied mostly on insect control measures that were least disruptive to the agroeconomic system. The use of mating disruption technology such as pheromone reduced the success of pink bollworm moths locating each other. The use of pheromone traps helped us monitor pink bollworm adult populations and their movement. The use of artificial dyes to rear pink bollworm moths helped identify lab moths from the wild types out in the field. The use of sterile technology helped us release up to 31 million sterile moths per day, which resulted in the pink bollworm population's redu reduction and their offspring. Yesterday we were riding in in the, in the Uber and we were talking to the Uber driver. She was asking us why we were here in Washington. We told her that we were here to celebrate the eradication of pink bollworm. Well, how did you accomplish that? And one of the things we said to her was that we eradicated the pink bollworm by irradiating the uh, insect and making it sterile. And her comment immediately back to us was, well, you tinkered with their tinkers. <laughs> <laughs> She's got it, didn't she? <laughs> the use of BT cotton is a combination with all the previously mentioned technology enhanced our ability to target pink bullworm immatures that live most of their life inside the cotton bowl. Each of these remarkable scientific contributions were independently discovered over the past 100 years. Both the collective use and an area-wide program has now eradicated the pink bollworm and will return many years of dividends to the producers and society. I am thankful for having a part in this historic event and seeing the eradication declaration that we producers have been seeking for years. I thank all the producers united with a common cause of irradiating the pink bollworm from the U.S. cotton production. And on behalf of those producers, I thank the many scientists, state and federal officials USDA APHIS for this partnership that is marked with a victorious accomplishment. Mr. Sarek, Secretary, we thank you extremely much. Thank you. So thank you, Clyde, and thank you to the entire grower community for your partnership and leadership that helped bring us uh, today's success. We're going to now uh, go into a part of the program where we're going to recognize other extraordinary contributions that made the eradication of uh, pink bollworm from U.S. cotton production areas possible. And at the same time, I want to voice our strong support uh, for those uh, cotton producers in the states of Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Virginia, and the Carolinas that have been impacted by the recent hurricanes and uh, heavy rains that uh, were associated with them. Uh, USDA is providing assistance for those in need and we will continue to be there in the days, weeks, and months to come to uh, listen to their concerns and to provide assistance when possible. I'm honored to be here with all of you who partner together and work tirelessly to make this achievement a reality. As we heard from uh, secre the Secretary, Gary and Clyde, and as most of you know firsthand, it's been a long, hard road to get to this day. The pink bollworm now joins the ranks of many other destructive pests like the European grapevine moth, which have been eliminated and can thankfully be put in the wind column for U.S. agriculture. So today, it's time to celebrate and thank those who were so critical in getting us to this point. From the beginning, as you have heard, the pink bollworm 
uh, program has been a cooperative, grower-led effort that has worked across Arizona, California, New Mexico, and Texas in coordination with our state and federal agencies for, in our drive for success. We're starting this portion of the program by honoring the industry grower groups that provided the critical boots on the ground personnel who carried out operations in each state. Specifically, we're honoring the Cotton, Arizona Cotton Research and Promotion Council, the California Cotton Pest Control Board, the South Central New Mexico uh, Cotton Bull Weevil Control Committee, and the Texas Bull Weevil Eradication Foundation. And the folks uh, affiliated with these groups worked on every program activity from mapping fields and placing traps and pheromone rope to monitoring and collecting data and records and to coordinating and pinpointing areas for sterile moth releases. They also provided critical continuity, accountability, and worked directly with producers to ensure their buy-in and compliance with program objectives during every phase of the operations. The members of these groups are true leaders and visionaries. They are innovative and forward thinking and met every challenge with a can-do attitude, frequently going above and beyond the call of duty. Never once did they waver in their commitment to ridding their states and the country of this serious past. And they continue to work diligently to carry out post-eradication monitoring activities. Obviously, we want to make sure the pink bollworm never returns. Now I'm going to ask representatives from each organization to come forward to accept their award, awards. And the first group I'd like to recognize is the Arizona Cotton Research and Protection Council. So yeah, uh, Leighton and Larry, if you'd like to come forward to accept your award. So along with the strong field presence, the, co the council provided critical technical guidance and support for the development of, of the successful area-wide integrated, integrated pest management program in Arizona. In particularly, we want to point out Larry's contributions. Larry understands cotton production very well, as well as the damage that uh, uh, PBW can cause. He was instrumental in developing a program that was practical, sustainable, and conformed with growers' practices. Larry also played a key role in champ championing the concept of full PBW eradication to Western cotton growers. His friendship and partnership with Bob Stanton, who is also here with us today, was instrumental in creating an unstoppable force that focused on that mission. The cotton the council remains one of our strongest allies today, and we're looking forward to moving forward with them on the monitoring phase of the program. Thank you, Leighton and Larry, and to other members of the Arizona Cotton Research Protection Program Council who played such a critical role in the success of the program in Arizona and elsewhere. Thank you. Okay, the next organization that I would like to recognize is the California Cotton Pest Control Board. And uh, Roger Isom, I think you're uh, going to come forward. And Ted is. Ted is? Roger Ted is. is. Okay, well, then we're, that's wonderful then. As a co-chair, that's probably appropriate as well. So uh, uh, all my information is on Roger here, so I probably don't want to read that. <laughs> a lot of the people here do know me. And uh, having the opportunity to serve with the California group on getting the facility going in Phoenix and keeping it going has been a big deal uh, for all the California people and the rest of the cotton. So I'm a cotton grower and uh, 
we appreciate all the efforts of all the people that helped do that. So I think that that is uh, actually one of the key uh, factors that is uh, what is very special about the effort that the four states put together is that California actually put the money behind the facilities in Arizona to be able to accomplish the task at the end of the day. And it's not every day you find that kind of cooperation and collaboration between states and unselfishness to be able to have, you know, fund the facilities in another state. And so that's one of the main reasons why we're wanting to recognize the California Cotton Pest Control Board today. So thank you very much. Okay, now I would like to recognize the Texas Bull Weevil Eradication Foundation. And Wendy Patton, I think, uh, are you, you going to? Okay, good. And uh, this is another case where we uh, can't say enough about the foundation and its work. Texas was the first state to pass a referendum and vote on a PBW program, so our partners in the Lone Star State were at the forefront for the push for eradication uh, despite some uh, daunting ch challenges. Uh, PBW seemed to be unsurmountable pro uh, problem in El Paso, for example, since the pest loves long staple cotton and the conditions were just right for both in that area. But Texans, being Texans, took this and other setbacks in stride. In so many ways, both large and small, the Texas Bull Weevil Eradication Foundation set the stage and expectations for other programs. I know the kind of effort and the commitment that took, and we uh, thank you for it. Uh, without that first step, today's achievements just wouldn't have been possible. So thank you very much. So now I would like to recognize the South Central Mexico uh, Cotton Bowl Weevil Control Committee. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Patrick Sullivan, is, or are you going to accept for them? Okay. <laughs> so the committee provided the critical field presence in New Mexico. And New Mexico was also the second state to pass a referendum and vote for the uh, PBW eradication program stepping in shortly after Texas and officially making the program a regional effort. New Mexico's all-in participation at the very beginning paved the way for the success we're celebrating today, and that participation certainly didn't come without a price. New Mexico growers went some of um, very trying times uh, due to the cost of uh, the program. At times, they were assessed $15 per bale, amounting to $45 per acre, but the state's growers knew the investment was more than worth the cost in terms of the long-term payoff. Even, though the hard time, even through the hard times, growers fully funded the program and stayed strong. And now we're moving into the phase of the program where I'd like to... Uh, I'm going to let's, <laughs> So now we're going to move into the phase of the uh, program where we'd like to express our appreciation for the folks who worked hard on a national level. So I'd like to ask members of the National Cotton Council who are here with us today to please come forward. Do you have some more that you'd like to have join you? So uh, again, this is another uh, group that has just really provided unflagging uh, leadership and support as the uniting force behind the states in the PBW eradication program. And without the National Cotton Council standing with us, uh, we couldn't have launched the program. The Cotton Council performed the critical behind the scenes work coordinating with federal appropriators, state regulators, and APHIS and other involved federal agencies. 
The council also stood up a grower advisory board made up of leaders from all affected states and a technical advisory committee comprised of scientific experts from each state which provided objective, effective, and scientific guidance during every phase of the program. At the same time, NCC was instrumental in getting growers in all of the Cotton Belt states to support PBW eradication efforts. NCC was and continues to be an effective voice for cotton producers throughout the country. That level of national support was so important to maintaining the momentum of the program, particularly since PBW was considered to be a major pest in just the four states. I uh, want to express uh, USDA, our thanks, MRP, APHIS's uh, thanks and gratitude to NCC and all of its members for their constant support over the years. Uh, this uh, accomplishment is uh, truly shared by you. I would now like to uh, recognize USDA's Agricultural Research Service, ARS. And Dr. Simon Liu and uh, Dr. Peter Bredding, I think, are here with us uh, today. And uh, ARS's research efforts over the course of many years formed a foundation that eventually led to the identification and development of the components for the pink bollworm eradication program. ARS continued supporting the eradication effort through progressive research into the potential for PBW to develop resistance to BT crops and techniques to monitor native PBW populations for any indication of resistance. As we all know, PBW eradication not only helped in terms of crop production, but was also necessary for crucial export markets. ARS looked into effort if, into effects of the ginning process at Las Cruces, and its research there supported the notion that once cotton is ginned to the industry standard, there is no risk of a pest surviving. This finding supported both the PBW and boll weevil programs, and also aided in expanding export markets for baled cotton. ARS's critical research supported all phases of our PBW activities, both pre- and post-eradication, and for that, we sincerely thank you. So this, uh, you know, truly underscores uh, Secretary uh, Purdue's claim that it's one USDA, that we all have to work together across mission areas to be able to accomplish the goals and meet the needs and expectations of the agriculture industry all uh, across the United States. And so with that, now I'd like to have the very fine honor to uh, to recognize our very own Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service uh, personnel, Kevin, Osama, Bob, Bill, and Karen, if you'd like to come forward. APHIS managed the overall federal support for the pink bollworm eradication program, providing expertise to mass rear, sterilize, and release up to 31 million moths per day, as we've heard. Um, APHIS uh, paid for the sterile moths and aerial application and in coordination with its state counterparts also maintained pink bollworm quarantines so the pests did not spread. APHIS provided sec uh, scientific support to verify moth quality, testing pheromone formulations, and continuing, uh, continually exploring advancements to enhance the efficacy and effectiveness of the program. 
Bob and Osama, along with Larry, uh, who I recognized earlier, believed in the program from the very beginning and fought to launch an eradication effort. They worked tirelessly to make a PBW eradication program possible. Osama is the Deputy Administrator for APHIS Plant Protection and Quarantine Program, but he has been uh, involved in this effort for his entire career. Osama traveled extensively to speak with growers about the possibility of an eradication program laying the foundation. He also convinced Mexico to initiate an eradication program, which was critical to eradicating PBW and commercial cotton production areas in the United States. Bob retired as lead at APHIS's pink bollworm rearing facility in Phoenix. However, Bob certainly didn't rest on his laurels in retirement. He later chaired the National Cotton Council's pink bollworm technical advisory committee where he traveled through impacted areas and tirelessly advocated for all aspects of the program progressing from eradication through confirmation and eradication and post-eradication. Bob spent an entire career and many years of retirement fighting to eliminate this pest from U.S. cotton, and I'm glad we had him on our side in this fight. <laughs> the pink bollworm didn't stand a chance. I appreciate APHIS's long-standing commitment and perseverance perseverance in pursuit of the goal of pink bowl worm eradication and thank all of you who, are, who were involved in helping achieve this goal. So. So, uh, you know, as I think it's obvious as we went through uh, not only the secretary's comments and his excitement at the, the, the celebration and the ability to knock one more pest off our list of responsibilities, at least in eradication, we're still going to monitor and make sure we don't lose ground. But uh, uh, through all the different uh, uh, cotton leaders that spoke, as well as uh, our ability and our opportunity to recognize the many groups that work together to make sure it was a success that we truly are uh, celebrating a great milestone in U.S. agriculture and in the cotton industry. So uh, we look forward to partnering with you as we continue to uh, uh, try to identify pests and diseases that uh, need our help and assistance at APHIS as we work with you uh, to market cotton, not only here domestically, but all over the world. We have an entire uh, group of missionaries and an entire USDA team that looks forward to uh, growing the cotton industry uh, into the future. So thank you very much and congratulations on this great accomplishment. I think we have refreshments now. Yep. <laughs>